Hey folks, Tony Lockhart here. We got another process video for you. So let's get started on like doing um, a character sketch and kind of painting. So I'm gonna start out with a thumbnail sketch, drop the opacity. I'll put in a line work sketch and it's a little bit cleaner. And if I want to, I could take this line sketch and I could drop that opacity and put a new layer on top and kind of clean it up and really take my time. I'm not gonna do that with this one, but instead what I wanna do is the layer underneath my line work, I wanna select it. So when I press a new layer, I can get a color fill. So I'm gonna go for a nice cool color, kind of like a grayish blue. And what I wanna do is to just color in all of that. So let me just bracket up and get a larger brush. And now I've got some kind of a nice um, blue grayish background, okay? Next, what I want to do is select the line work layer and then I'm going to press new layer so it goes right on top. And again, I want to go for a multiply layer. So the multiply is going to make everything underneath um, that's white, make it the darker color. And then of course, everything that is black is not going to be affected. Okay, so now um, notice I'm using the exact same color and now I'm going to just go in with the same blue that I had for the background and it's going to multiply on top of all this and I'm going to be able to get some kind of a drop shadow. Okay, so imagine light source is here and it's pointing down. So what I could do is start to get some kind of a shadow for this character as I try to fill this up. So, you know, um, you can pick whatever brush you want to be able to do this. It all works really well. Um, but you know, just kind of have fun with it. And what I'm going to try to do is to just color in this character and try to emulate um, some kind of a light source, you know, that's on the character. Okay, if the uh, light source is on the left side, then the head's going to be casting a shadow over, um, you know, the shoulders and the chest. This side of the torso is gonna have a little bit of shadow as well. And then of course this arm is probably gonna be in shadow. Top part of the forearm is not gonna be in shadow. So maybe over here, I'm just gonna get the rest of it, kind of fill that in, get the hands in there. You don't really need line work in order to be able to draw this stuff. Sometimes you can just start drawing, you just let it do its thing. And there we go. And let's go underneath here. We're gonna get those shadows in there and this stuff too. Okay, so at any rate, we're getting a little bit closer and I've got a pretty solid shadow layer that's starting to look realistic. And what's cool is if you look at this, this image right here on the right side, it's already starting to have a little bit more depth. If I turn the shadow layer on and off, it's already gonna look more 3D and less 3D, which is pretty cool, okay? Um, again, I'm gonna go and make a new layer on top. This time, let's go for maybe like a lighten or like a screen. Let's try lighten and see what happens when I add in something. Oh, that's not good. Let's do a screen. Yeah, that works. So I'm gonna do a screen layer on top and then very sparingly, I'm gonna just draw in some highlights. And the highlights on the screen are looking very strong, but that's okay because we can always tone things down. I'm gonna go and add in a little bit of white so that way it changes the actual color. And then what I wanna do is to knock this back just a bit. It's a little too strong. So how do I do that? I can go to the opacity and drop that down just a bit, okay? Now I can go and pick out some of these these areas that are closest to the light source and I can make the highlights really start to to pop and then next thing you know I got something that has a lot more depth to it and if I were to really spend like an hour and a half two hours on this um, it would look a lot better and a lot more accurate um, so we haven't even really touched you know you know how do you what happens when you pick a contrasting color um, how do you get that contrasting color in there and then it gets your character to pop out so that's one last little uh, gem for you before we end this. You know, we could really take this, we could take something that's opposite of blue, which is orange, and kind of throw that in there. And we're gonna see like, what does that relationship do 
to this character that we started sketching. Okay? So anyways, give that a shot. Um, you know, try multiply layers. Try to start your sketching with some kind of a tone first, um, like a blue tone or a green tone or a pink tone. Um, try your multiply layers for your shadows. If the shadow's too strong, knock it back just a bit. It doesn't have to be so strong. And then of course, um, try some other types of color combinations as well. So, you know, you can try some greens, you know, as a background color on your multiply layer. You could try the, the same green on your lighten layer. And then of course you can get different types of effects to make your character just pop and have the overall artwork, you know, just kind of stand out and look super cool. Okay. And then um, I'll do one last thing, which is to, I'm going to take both of these. Let's put them into a folder. And part of the reason I'm going to do the folder is like what happens when I turn those things off? You're going to get a completely different look. And if I zoom out, like it's it's a little too close and the, the line work is not so pretty, so it doesn't look right. But if I zoom out to about this far, then the audience's imagination is jumping in. And like already, this character looks super 3D and it looks like it's popping right off the page. And I, you know, haven't even spent 10 minutes on it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.